Any questions? Uh, good morning. Uh, we are doing it live on Master Jimmy Wong YouTube. Uh, that way I can type uh, any questions. You can type questions on here while I'm talking. Today, uh, we're going to talk about the Wu Hao Tai Chi hands. Uh, it's very important that we know how to place our hand, what direction, what angle, and the structure of it. Because the hand and the leg have to match. Uh, the harmony, the three harmonies, uh, the three external harmony. The wrist match the foot, the elbow match the knee, and the shoulder match uh, the hip area or the uh, below the belt, that area. So those you have to match, but I won't talk about that, the matching part, the external harmony. You can read all that in uh, my, the other, uh, you can look at it my, at the other YouTube channel. It's on there. It's very important that we know how to put the direction of the hand, especially when you're executing the form. When we do lazy, okay, let's talk about the, the, the form first. This is the thumb, index, middle finger, ring finger, and the last finger here. And then this part here, this part here. Uh, Wu Hao is used a lot, this part, all the way to the back here, this part, all the way to the back here, this part. In Wu Hao, we use a lot of that. Is it clear, by the way? Uh, can you see me clearly? Because my screen here is kind of, uh, uh, kind of, uh, it's kind of uh, low here, the screen here. Uh, don't know why. Okay, good. You can see me clearly. That's very good. Okay, so um, uh, the palm in Wuhal, we use a lot of this part here and all the way here. It depends on how you strike the person. For example, in Lazy to Tai Kung, when we do Lazy to Tai Kung, this palm is used here. It's not that. It's at the angle. It's not straight either. If you do your lazy mental tycho this way straight, it will be wrong. So your shoulder will be tight. If you open it up, your shoulder will be relaxed when you're facing this way. Okay, so that's how we do a lazy to tycho. So the striking point is here. In Wuhan Tai Chi, our palms are always open most of the time. I would say 95% of the time. They are sometimes not open. Some Well, they're all open, but they're not clenched unless it's a fist. Okay. So even the fist is not tight. It's hollow. The fist is hollow. It's like you can put your finger in there. It's hollow. So that we are not tightened. Again, when we do Tai Chi, we have to be totally relax. In order to relax, there's no muscle should be tightened. The lesser it's tightened, the better it is. Because we are training the internal form. Internal, internal energy only move better and correctly when nothing is clenched. Everything has to be calm and relaxed. 
and aware. That's why. That's the purpose of training internal martial arts. Because internal martial arts uh, do not worry about the muscles at all. They worry about what's the muscle inside or the muscle outside need to relax so it attached to the bones rather than it tighten the bones. So therefore the palm also have to relax. Now the palm, where do we focus on the palm when we put the palm out there, when we do woha? The reason why our palm get pretty warm is because we focus on the palm, that's for sure. When the mind focus on something, the energy goes there, you know, and that energy will respond to you in awareness. If that energy, it's a, has breathing, that energy has that energy. An example, if you look at the children, look at the kids, they look at you, they can feel you. Even you look at the dogs, they can feel you. If you show love to the dog, the way you look at the dog, the dog will know. So you can feel the emotion part of it. So the palm, if we focus on the palm, our palm will get warm. Now, in the process of our training of Wuhan, I always tell you all to focus the entire palm. Because the reason is because the entire palm has all the meridian, the three major meridian from inside. This is called the yin side. The yin side of the hand has the meridian, and there's a yang side of the hand have the meridian. So if you focus on the palm, then all the meridian are excited or activated. And when you're activated with your body mechanics, with your emotional intelligence, it's gonna give you the best, uh, hopefully the best, energy you can have during your process of training. So, like I said, so when we do lazy to tackle, the palm is this way. Now, when is the palm this way? The palm is this way when we practice the repulse monkey. Now, you're going to ask me, how come we don't, it, we don't do it this way? It's because of the applications. So the position of the hand in a Wuha technique is based on the application. What are we doing? The repulse monkey is to move the monkey away or move the opponent away or to stop somebody coming into you and you move them away. So it's a push, okay? It's not a strike, okay? Now, lazy to tie code, it's a strike. Brush knee. It's a strike, okay? So uh, for that, we have to make the change when we do the form. Now the entire time, our Wuhao hand doesn't change very much. Doesn't change very Once we position the hand, we don't change it unless it's a change of a movement. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate to you real quick. I'm not sure you can see me from here. So let's say we do uh, repulse monkey. See, when I bring my hand like this, repulse monkey, okay, from fist under the elbow, okay. You can see my fist under the elbow is not like that. So it's like that. Why is it like that? Because it's part of lazy to tie code. So the palm is like that. So you can see this part has been used. So the fist under the elbow, it's like that. So you can see how I bring my hand back. See, when I bring my hand back, this whole hand is straight. It's not bent. It's not that. It's not that either. So it's straight. You see that? From here, it's straight. So it doesn't change. And I think it's just still keep straight. It doesn't go like that. It doesn't go like that. And it doesn't go like that. It doesn't go, it doesn't go like that. No, it doesn't, because it doesn't change, okay? So, if you change it, then there's too much movement going on 
in the wrist, so that may obstruct the qi excitement towards the end of the fingertips, all the way down here. So from here, as you can see, I bring it up, and I drop, and then I push. So it's straight. Now, Repulse Monkey, uh, the Disco Channel people, the 108 people, uh, you have not learned it yet, but you will learn it next uh, uh, next lesson. So, but I'm talking about it right now, so you know how the position is. So the position, repulse me, your position, hand is straight. Okay, not like that. And same thing. So when you do playing the banjo, that's a good one. Say, wuhao tai chi again. Open close. Open close is not like that. Open close is like that because if you do this, you cannot push someone. Again, as I said, it's based on the applications. So from here, we push. Where are we pushing? We are using the entire area of this side to push the person. So when we push, when we finish pushing, you know, we, it becomes like that. So the palm open up after that when you finish pushing. In the process of pushing it, this side of the palm is used. So from playing the banjo, for example, from here, all right, the palm is like that. And we sit back, see that? The palm come down, it plays it like that. And then this hand come, it pushes straight. And then from here, it plays it down. So the palm is straight, okay? So this is some of the, so you don't put your palm like that when you do playing the banjo. See that? If you do like that, it says curve. So it should be relaxed and straight. So that's uh, one of the features and the functions of the uh, palm. Now, what is important about the palm? If you practice Qigong, uh, your qi, Qigong teacher, I'm sure, tell you that there is a point in the palm, which is a very important part. Uh, it's called Lao Gong Xie. Lao Gong Xie is between these two hands going down here. That's a point right here. Lao Gong Xie. That is a very important part of Qi Gong. That's the Qi circulates over there. So when we do our Wu Hao, at the next level that I want you to focus on, focus on the entire palm, but focus more on here. If you focus more on here, eventually, when you do the form, when you know the form very well at a higher level, okay, everybody can hear me, that's good. At a higher level, you will be able to feel, feel some spiral going on. Some people feel spiral, some people feel some wheezing sound, they feel something like that. And some people feel coolness, everybody's different. Whatever you feel, leave it there and enjoy it as much as you can until it goes away. Sometimes it will go away and then it come back again. So, and when you bring it down, you can still focus there if you want. Otherwise, you focus the entire hand, you never go wrong because your hand will always be warm. Okay, now the palm, when we touch as a person, where do we touch in pushing hands? When we touch the person, we also touch from this Lao Gong Xie, this point here. It's a pericardium point. It's called Lao Gong Xie. It's the Qi Gong point, sometimes they call it. So, as I told you, it's between these two fingers down here. So when we touch somebody, we also touch to there. Because you have been training on it, you have been sensitive on it, you have some kind of a <coughs> miracle chi power, so it's the same, you might be able to detect your opponent even better. If you are able to attain that skill. You know, so as I said, that point is very important. 
okay, for your purpose of practicing Qigong. So if you want to practice the standing like a tree, you know, holding the ball or hugging the tree, you can, you can connect these two points together to feel the Qi uh, interchange with each other. Okay, so that's the position of the palm. Also, in the Wuhal, we have what we call the blue, blue dragon. Now, the blue dragon, the palm is a little bit different. The reason why it changes in the blue dragon is because of the application, like I said. So the, the blue dragon, uh, now again, some of you haven't learned it yet, but that's okay. In the blue dragon, the body sink, no changes, and then about the hand going up, this hand coming down, this leg coming back, and then it goes up. Now, we do not hold a beak like that. Do not hold a beak like that. When you hold a beak like that, what's going to happen is that this one gets tightened up, everything gets tightened up. So we have the finger connect, but not tight like that. Just connect together, stick together, and this palm just go there. That way, the hand is very relaxed because we are hitting the opponent on the chin, chin, and then we open the palm again and then strike it out. Okay. So that is one difference. There's another palm in our Wuhal is the white crane spread wings. So from the single whip, as you can see the single whip is like that. So the single whip is not like that. So it's push out a little bit. We sit back and then from here, we scoop and then we sink. Okay, as we go up, we flip. Now this hand, you can watch this hand, this hand is gonna go up like that. So this hand doesn't do that. And this hand doesn't do that. So you just go up like that. And this is still straight, okay? You, so you can see the palm go as one line. The wrist is connected. See, the wrist is connected. So the wrists are never bent, except in the blue dragon, like I said, because of the application. So in this case, on the white crest spade wings, this hand just turned. Now this hand is coming from here. It just, just turned, it just turned. It just turned like that, okay? So the wrist is not involved that much. Actually, most of the time it's not because this hand, this palm here, this entire here is connected to your arm, to your bone there. If you have any questions, you can ask me. So, um, the palm, what about the fit? What about the, uh, the thumb? The thumb, our warhol, like I said, from here, you can see the thumb is, is it's open. The thumb is not like that. The thumb is never like that. The only become like that is when you do the blue dragon connect. So the thumb is naturally there. So the thumb is never like that. This is a Shaolin hand. A lot of Kung Fu hands is that way. Because if you do that way in Tai Chi, you tighten this up, your wrist become tight. I mean, uh, like I said, as I told you, our purpose of training Tai Chi, especially as an internal arts, as an internal arts to cultivate our Chi, to make our Chi move better, uh, move calmer, move easier, nothing need to be tightened. Everything need to be relaxed, especially the muscles. You know, the muscles should not be like that. The muscles should not be like that, like that, should not be. Everything is just there the way they are so that the bones hold the muscle, not the muscle grab the bone. So, because in Tai Chi, we have to separate the muscle from the bone, but they're together, don't get me wrong, but they're not tightening each other, you know. When we do this, you know the muscle is holding the bone. When we relax, then the muscle is, is let go. It's not holding the bone anymore. It's still attached to the bone, though. don't get me wrong. It's still as one unit, okay? So, um, so we don't do that. 
Deflect in the set punch. We just learned deflect in the in the set punch last time. Uh, so that was okay. Deflect in the set punch is this one, and then this one, and the punch is going like that. So and because of the punch, so we hold the fist again. The fist a hold. It's hold. So it's not like that. Okay. And then from here, the finger open. You see how the finger open? See from here. You sit back and the finger open. So it's not like this. We sit back and you see that? These two things turn. Watch my two hands. They're turning, 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 turning. See that? So you can see the palm straight, palm straight, and then turn, 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 turn together. And now when it come down, this is used. Press. Okay? As you can see. So when we neutralize somebody, we have our palm touch here. Now we touch someone, we can touch it this way. But this way you cannot neutralize some, somebody. This is for attacking someone. When it comes to neutralizing someone, again we use here. We use here. Okay, you can see um, this muscle here. I'm going a little bit closer. As you can see, this meat here, muscle, the palm touches here and it drags it. You see how I drag it? So I drag it, you know, so when I drag, I go like that. So I drag it. So when I drag, what happened is this palm, when it drags, this person here is going to be tightened. Okay, it's going to be tightened. I'm going to demonstrate that in my class. And I'll put in this an extra video for you guys, okay? So you can see from here, it's tight. See that? I'll go. So, you know, just a demonstration how the palm is used to neutralize someone. Hua, neutralize. Uh, neutralization is a technique of the second gate. Peng li, lu, lu, lu. It's the second gate of the primary uh, eight gates of the Tai Chi. Um, also, we do not bend our fingers like that. We don't have a tiger claw like that. You know, we have what we call uh, sit back to ride on the tiger. You know, in Wuhan Tai Chi for the 36th movement. So it's like that. We don't have that. We have what we call uh, uh, hit the tiger, you know, it's like that. So it's not tiger claw. We don't use a tiger claw, you know. So even though we use the tiger name. And we say white crane spread wings, we don't have the, the white crane beak like that. We don't use that in our, uh, our single wing. As you notice that in uh, other style of Tai Chi, the single whip have a beak. We don't. Our single whip, all the palms are open, pretty much. All right, we have a few minutes. If you all have any questions, again, please let us know where you're from. Uh, we will continue our, in the future, uh, uh, as, a, as you know, this is the Wuhan 108 online people lecture today, and I'm making it into public viewer on YouTube because uh, I want the public, especially the non Wuhan people, to understand why Wuhan Tai Chi palm and the hands are different, why we have to keep it straight all the time so that uh, we are able to apply the way. Wuhal is applied. That was the reason why I make it a, a, a public uh, live today so that people can see it and understand it and say, oh, that's how Wuhal is. So for those who are new here, we have a Discord channel called Master Jimmy Wong a server and you can join us. It's free. All you need to do is register, come in and please give us your name when you come in. You can your ID can be any name you want. Uh, let us know who you are. 
where you're from, especially which country you're from, or any which city you're from, if you're in America. Uh, basically, I'm trying to gather a lot of people. I call them the Wuhal tribe, so that you can be part of us to see some of the Wuhal activities from all over the world. We have about more than 20 countries now practicing Wuhal. Uh, the biggest group right now is in Brazil, the biggest group. Um, they are handled by my representative, Sifu Seha, and his wife, uh, who handling this entire uh, promotion of the Wuhal Tai Chi in Brazil. So um, you can, uh, as part of the uh, tribe, you can contact them if you live in Brazil. Or if you live close to the continent where Brazil is, you can also contact them. They have over 20 schools in Brazil, all over Brazil, doing this Wuhal Tai Chi. And it's the biggest group that I have uh, for the Wuhal Tai Chi. Another thing is um, in the process of your training, just do the best you can. You don't have to be perfect in every move that you do. The important thing is understand the direction where it's going, the angle, you know, and your chin end and your shoulder is relaxed. Get all your body mechanics correct. Do the flow the best you can. And over the years, uh, you will build it up very good, okay? And for those who wanted to, me to look at your first 15 move of the Wuhal Tai Chi that we just completed uh, last week, you can send the video to me. You can make it a link in YouTube channel. Just send it to me. I'll look at it and give you some uh, tips and upgrades and intuition what you need to practice on so that you can go to the next level. Uh, if you have any questions now, I'd be glad to answer your questions. Otherwise, um, I am ready to end this lecture. Thank you very much and you all have a nice day.